All right, guys, I am on the last piece of phase one, and that is storage. So as many of you guys know, I've been working very hard on the van, getting as much done as possible for the upcoming riding season. You know, the weather's warm. It's time to get out there, get on two wheels, right? So with all that in mind, phase one, or at least my plan for phase one, was to get to where I could bolt dirt bikes down, you know, have a place to put food, have a place to sleep, have water, so on and so forth. So the last piece of the phase one video is storage. And as many of you know, I got a, I got a chance to take the van out and I learned a few things. One of the things that I learned was having storage that is not on the floor is super helpful getting things off of the floor so that you can move around especially when bikes are in but even when the bike is out you know just maneuvering through the van when it's time to cook or whatever the case may be having things stored not you know not always in a bin where you got to dig stuff out so i'm going to run down the whole gambit of storage that i chose to do uh, for the van, obviously, like most things, I'm not done. Uh, you know, the van's going to evolve. More storage ideas and, you know, everything, as many of you know, that have vans or are building a van, it, it's, it's a continued work in progress. So I just wanted to get enough stuff going to where I could uh, successfully use the van and be comfortable and have it be as convenient as possible. So let's look at some of the first things that you guys have seen is the Rubbermaid bins. So I chose to use the, the Brute Rubbermaid bins, number one, because they're really good quality. You can stand on these things. You can sit on them. They're tough. They're not going to collapse like some basic Walmart uh, ripoff brands, right? So they are at the right height to where my bed can fold down, and I made my bed height specifically for that reason. The bins can be used as storage underneath the bed. If there's a bike in here, I can just pull the bed up, access the bin, and then, you know, if there's a bike out, then I can just pull the bin out. So pretty straightforward. What I haven't talked about was this Igloo MX cooler. Um, I really like this cooler. It's a, only a 25 liter cooler, but kind of like the bins, it's so ruggedized and tough. You could sit or stand on this thing. I actually was using it for a seat a fair amount whenever I was in here working. Um, what I don't like about it is it is a little bit small. So instead of getting one big cooler, I'm just going to get two of these. And I think that's going to help my space overall because I can store, um, I can put two side by side here actually, or another one right there, which is where I was putting it. Um, which gives me the ability to uh, separate my vegetables um, and, and raw meats and drinks and stuff like that to have a little bit more modularity. And I still get the total 50 liters of, of storage, which is what most bigger coolers is. So I do think I'm going to just do two of these um, and then, you know, have the ability to uh, to separate stuff, which I kind of like that idea. So pretty straightforward on this. You guys have seen um, this method of storage. These bins have been great. Um, the, again, the problem is, is like when you, if everything is in these bins, when you want something, especially if the bed's down, you got to drag it out, open the lid, which, you know, it's not that big a deal. But as I mentioned before, what I'm really learning about vans is the more convenient things are, the more, you know, everything adds up, you know, the more modular and snap on, pop out, easy to access type stuff you have the better. There's no way of getting away with bulk storage or without bulk storage. And that's what these bins are for. This is my bulk storage really. So I knew I needed a little bit other methods and techniques. So let's look at some of the other stuff that I've done. All right. So you guys have seen the kitchen, right? You guys have seen the burner and you guys have seen the, the pop out, um, tables so if you haven't seen that video it's in the series just check it out um, you'll see it it's the kitchen video now one thing I notice about the kitchen is is like whenever you're cooking salt pepper spatulas you know frankly even the bungee that I use to lock the wheel onto the hook to keep this door open on a windy day or on an incline um, kind of what's going on here um, you know, if I store all that stuff inside, then I have to access it and grab it every single time. So one of the things that I decided to do was uh, to just add these little nets. If you watch my kitchen video, if you remember, I was going to end up putting a heat shield here or a backstop for the burner. Um, I just don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. So I was like, you know what, I'll throw, uh, I'll throw some uh, storage here for some spices. 
uh, maybe like uh, spray on olive oil or something like that. So everything is right there. Uh, and if it causes a problem, I'll just remove it and throw the, the shield up and move that guy somewhere else. But I want to give that one a shot. You know, I mean, these little nets are like 20 bucks. Like you get a, t uh, a pair of them on Amazon. And, uh, you know, it's just, again, it's convenient storage for if you want to throw something in there. So this is the type of stuff that I wanted to, you know, add to. So with the kitchen, I added these little net storages. So I thought it would be a good idea. And I may do even some like smaller stuff up here. Like I said in the kitchen video, that's one of the benefits of keeping the plastic uh, door panel was that I would have the ability to attach stuff like that. And it still looks pretty clean. All right, so let's look at some of the new stuff that I've done. All right, it's kind of hard to see in here just because the, it's morning time and the light. So I moved some of my lights over here, modular lights. Um, so you guys can see this little bag thing that I added, right? So what this is, is this is really just a pocket piece for a Jeep. Um, again, not super expensive, you know, but really convenient. So all this is really just going to be used to store, you know, things that I need to access. So there wasn't really that much to it. Um, it's made for a Jeep. So as, as you can kind of see, it's the background um, behind like it would sit where it would hang uh, on the uh, the rails of a Jeep and then it would just kind of hang there. So I thought it would be perfect for the van. Mounting it, super easy. Because my van uh, skeleton's exposed, I just used the straps to kind of loop through the holes and I reinforced everything with zip ties to make sure that those uh, nylon plastic buckles don't get loose over time. So yeah, that was pretty much it. The netting, I actually kind of like it because I can use um, the carabiners to hang stuff, right? So I think this is a really good storage idea. I already started using it for my uh, my little striker there. And yeah, it's been really, really good so far. I haven't used it a whole lot, but I've got my straps in there for whenever it comes time to, uh, to bolt down bikes. Everything's right there, not stuck in a bin somewhere where I gotta bend over and access it and all that stuff. So I'll put a link down um, in the description for this guy. It's pretty good. Um, I did kind of run out of space because it kind of hangs over the door a little bit, but I wanted to make sure that I was bolting up these guys uh, really good and make sure they're even and it looks really nice. So let's look at these. All right, these are the right line Jeep storage bags. They're storage duffels, if you will. And it's really just a four pocket system that's made out of welded PVC. It is waterproof um, because it's designed for a Jeep. Um, well, obviously, I'm not going to need it to be waterproof uh, where it sits right now. But it is, again, pretty modular, right? So whenever I was looking at storage to mount things up and away and be able to access it, I pretty much had two options. Build a cabinet of some type, whether it's extruded aluminum or wood or whatever people do when they build cabinets um, into their vans or their RVs or whatever, or use what we call soft storage, um, which is essentially just a bag with some rigidity and structure that you can stow things in. Now I chose the bag just for two reasons. Number one, it's, it's really, it's lighter. And number two, it's more modular. It's not a part of the van. And as you, you guys know, that's really been my theme through this whole thing is that I wanna keep things modular. I wanna keep things light, um, but also extremely functional. And whenever I ran into these, I thought it would be worth give, uh, giving it a shot and you know trying them out. So I will say there are other options out there. One of the options that I've seen was an overlanding, but they were like $400 each. It's essentially a duffel bag that they flip upside down and then it mounts to L-Track. Um, they look like really, really good quality, but the $400 per pouch. So I just couldn't justify the cost. These were 189 each from Rightline, which again, isn't cheap, right? They're not giving anything away, uh, but for this price of one, I think I, I, I could do both uh, storage bags and, and containers and still, you know, hopefully have a quality product. Now the right line does have a one year warranty. And one of the main complaints based on what I read in the reviews is that the zippers go. Um, those were some older reviews that, and I hope that the zippers, you know, they do a little better uh, with maybe they change the design or whatever. 
Waterproof zippers do have a tendency to not be as durable um, just because they have these that waterproof stuff in them. But nonetheless, nonetheless, the the right line bags has like a slot for a harder plastic top, which allows it to create some form. And then in the top, as you guys can see, two zippers. Each pocket has the two zippers and then the Velcro. We have like the little mesh bag that's in here. And then there's a bottom. There's a little bit of a, a harder plastic bottom to give it form. Um, I may replace these with maybe some like 1 16th inch ABS plastic cut to size. We'll see how the OEM stuff they provided does. I don't think it's going to be a huge issue, but if I want it to be a little bit more rigid, um, that's something that I could do in the future. How I mounted it up, pff, super easy guys, there's nothing to it. I literally just used my the old good old fashioned rib nuts, which these guys were already there, and then some D-rings. So D-rings, rib nuts, and then the straps. Because I left the top um, frame, portion of the frame on the, um, the van exposed, it was really easy to mount it up. They just kind of float here and they hang out. Um, if I have problems with how much weight they hold, I will do some sort of support on the bottom um, because as you know the way this is designed it's for a jeep right so it's really this bottom piece just sets on the floor of the jeep so it's not really designed to quote float like this if i have any problems with it i can always add some supports um, or something like that but i think it's going to do really well no one really complained in the reviews about uh, it tearing or separating from the straps or anything like that so this is uh, my main storage, which my plan is to probably put all of my gear with spares in this guy. And I'm really, I haven't tested it with my uh, my Liat boots yet. I'm waiting to see. I'm pretty sure my boots will fit in here. If not, they'll end up going in a bin. Uh, they're pretty big. So, um, and then all my personal storage, and then my uh, bedding and all that stuff will go on this side. You know, keep the lighter, bulkier items in these. Um, and then that way the heavier stuff can go in, in my bins. So that's what I chose for that type of storage. So the two last things that I'll address here is really something relatively small, but I did it recently and I thought I would talk about it, is jack storage and water storage. So I'll start with the jack storage first. You guys, as many of you know, um, this was a passenger van, right? Well, technically it kind of still is, but I'm bumped. So the passenger van has the jack mounted somewhere around actually where my water jugs are sitting uh, from the factory. It's kind of like behind a plastic well. So that's not gonna work. And I'm not sure where the cargo vans keep the jack um, and subsequent tool to lower the spare and all that jazz. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if they keep it in a similar location, but it's obviously not going to work for me as I'm moving stuff around. And I, you don't want to get into a situation where you're not bringing the jack that you may need with a spare tire. I could literally be stuck in my uh, alongside the road or at a camp somewhere with a flat tire and a spare and no way to drop the spare or jack, uh, jack the van up. So it's definitely one of those things you want to take with you. Now, with that in mind, it's definitely one of those things that could become a freaking missile and smash you in the back of the head if you were in a collision. So it needs to be bolted down, right? Um, on the maiden voyage, I actually had it bolted to a, or just not bolted, but setting with a strap on it through it to where it wouldn't go flying if I did have something happen. Um, but it was really just setting beside the bin. So I wanted to look for a place and I ended up modifying the OEM mount and sticking it to the um the side of the structure there again one of the reasons why it's really nice to have the insulation just covering the large area and keeping the skeleton of the van exposed it was super easy to just throw in some rib, rib nuts with some back plating and then bolt the uh bolt the um bracket for the jack to the wall so that may or may not be its final resting place we'll see i am kind of giving up a fair amount of storage right here and that storage isn't really used we'll see what phase two brings um but for phase one i think that's a great spot for the jack um for now 
So the, the second thing that I'll talk about here for just like miscellaneous stuff, you guys have already seen uh, these jugs hanging out. These are made by Scepter, it's a Canadian company. They're just military style, BPA free jugs. 20 liter, AKA five gallon uh, drinking jugs. These are my primary water jugs while I'm, um, while I'm just hanging out, right? So, sorry, ambulance was super loud. So anyway, these are my primary jugs, my primary water source. If I'm in a place um, where I'm hanging out that there's no water, um, I'll probably buy some bottled water and drinking water and things like that. But the main thing is having spare water to drink if I need it and having water to take showers with. And I haven't really talked about my shower system. It's probably something that I may address later. Um, I do have up uh, ambulance hang tight All right, that was a fire truck, but in any case super loud. So I haven't really talked too much about my shower um, You know, it, it's nothing cosmic. It, it really is just a shower curtain that I'm going to have magnetically sticking to um, Right here's the hook. So a hook here. It just hangs out because it's a magnet and uh, right here and then it'll just go it'll hang right here and then I have a little Amazon battery powered pump it's literally just a nozzle with, with a battery on the end of it you turn it on and bloop, drop it down in there that's my temporary solution um, for just a quick shower to be able to wash the the crud off at the end of the day um, for a you know a, a hot riding day that is my quote summer solution for now eventually i'm going to do something more in depth something a little bit uh nicer especially when the weather gets cold um, i would want a hot shower so that's my water storage for now with phase one now i have considered doing um a water tank i know some people especially with the expresses uh, my buddy has a water tank that does fit underneath and he hasn't really had any major issues with the tank freezing um, It's something I've been kind of tossing around But it's also at the same time something that I don't feel like is that critical for phase one So for now, I think the phase one solution is this modular setup of just having Jugs that I can fill up and then the shower unit to drop in and then the nozzle will attach up here and then I can just stand here with a curtain um, and then just take a quick combat style shower. You know, some super easy, really, right? So that wraps up storage, guys. The things that I've addressed with storage, hold tight. Might as well talk about tool storage. Two minutes, one minute. So. Tool storage has really been the same the entire time. I essentially used this um, L-Track pod that can also be used for a bike to hold down my tool setup. So this is my primary uh, tools for uh, the moto van, and this is my primary storage mean for those tools. This is a Craftsman tool set with the Versa stack system which basically means all these different pods lock together to make one unit and then you just if you want to separate them you pull them off so i really really like this system number one i like that it has a lot of storage built into a relatively compact space and number two i like that i can just bolt it down as one unit um, if i wanted to do something more complex um, later I, I could, but for now, this has really been great. I got a place for my liquids. I have all the tools, all the way from three eighths to half inch, Allen keys, screwdrivers, all that stuff is in here. So it's a really good set for, for this middle section. And then I have bulk storage for the top, your miscellaneous stuff that I'll need, your tire repair, so on and so forth. Um, special, uh, like my axle nut size, like it's a 27 millimeter uh, metric for the Abeta. So that type of stuff is in the top. So it rides right here. It doesn't really rattle around too much. And if I was in a collision, it wouldn't go anywhere. It's strapped down really well. So these are a thousand pounds rated and it's strapped into a D ring on the backside with a back plate. So um, it would not go anywhere. So just that on tool storage and that pretty much wraps up storage for phase one of the moto van i'm really really excited to get out there to use um these new right line bags and to utilize the um 
the the jeep store hanging storage on that side and kind of to find out where my gaps are one last note i will kind of mention i did consider doing like a uh, a seat storage car they make the the seat um, pouches that you can stick on the back but i didn't have enough room on the on the driver's side because my bed's right there and the passenger side i didn't really want to put one there because eventually that chair is going to flip around so That'll be phase two. That's some of the stuff that I'm going to be looking at. So phase one storage is complete. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys get something out of it. Maybe give you guys some ideas. Um, you know, if you got any questions about anything that I did or how I'm going to address something in the future or what I'm doing, um, yeah, just leave a comment down below and, and I'll answer it for you guys. All right. I appreciate you visiting the channel. Get out there. Get on two wheels. Let's go ride dirt bikes.